Welcome to Video Hell Show. My name is Frank and today we're here to discuss dog tapes. So my girlfriend and I have decided to get a dog and in that I decided that it was probably a good idea to brush up on some dog training videos because you know uh, I've had dogs in the past but I figure it's always good to stay current and to brush up on stuff and by staying current I figure uh, what's more current than uh, the 1990s. So uh, <laughs> I decided to watch two videos here. The first being Buddy the Wonder Dogs exercise and home training video. And the second being a Purina promotional tape, Dog Care Training and Tips, Purina Pets for People. Uh, as I always do, first I'm gonna talk about Buddy here. Uh, I'll read a little bit off the case. Uh, on the front we get a pretty good description, Buddy the Wonder Dog instructional exercise video. Teach your dog how to play baseball, hockey, soccer, football, and basketball. Easy to follow and loads of fun. Learn the secret training tips that turned this household pet into America's top sports dog. I'll, I'll read a little bit off the back of the box here as well. Great for dogs who like to play fetch. That's pretty key to all of this. Uh, what started as a simple game of playing fetch six years ago has turned my dog Buddy into a world famous canine athlete. Cross trained in baseball, hockey, soccer, football, and basketball, Buddy has been captivating audiences all over the world with his legendary athletic abilities. I have put together this instructional exercise video to teach you to train your dog to play these sports. I invite you to learn the basic skills, secret training tips, and equipment instruction that can turn your pooch into a true sports hound. Actually, I should have read that with the emphasis, into a true sports hound. I'm sure you'll find this video easy to follow and loads of fun. <laughs> it should bring you and your best friend years of happiness together. Good luck. Good luck. Emphasis on that. Um, and then it lists some national TV appearances that Buddy the Wonder Dog has had, uh, including The Late Show with David Letterman, uh, he's been on Full House, Animal Adventures, America's Funniest Home Videos, uh, Nickelodeon's Nick News, for <laughs> those of us in our 30s that remember that, uh, A Current Affair, The John and Lisa Show, ESPN Sports Night, and Great Plays of the Year, CNN Headline News and Play of the Week, uh, NBA's Inside Stuff, on Good Morning America and lastly on Fox's Kids Club. Um, he's had a number of also lists his professional sporting event appearances. It's all really promotional here. Uh, NBA for the Lakers, Clippers, Nuggets, Hornets, Knicks, and Bullets. For the NFL on the 49ers uh, halftime show, Rams and the Chargers. And then uh, during an NHL game for the Mighty Ducks and the Kings. Build a strong relationship with your dog. It also makes sure that it, it says that and shows a couple images of him at some of these different sporting events. Uh, nothing on set. But uh, that's fine. I'm sure these were all photographers that he paid. Anyway, running time, 45 minutes. Box designed by Wade. <laughs> and the second video, uh, like I mentioned, is dog care training and tips. Uh, Purina Pets for People brings love home, it says here on the front. And it's got a, a cute little doggy and a little welcome home thing. And on the back here, uh, thanks for opening your heart and home to a shelter pet. That's what we're doing. So, I mean... Thank you for thanking me, Purina, retroactively. Uh, owning a dog is a very rewarding experience, but those rewards come with certain responsibilities. Duh. This video gives you tips on what to do before bringing your new dog home. Crate training, housebreaking, problem solving, and basic training commands. Purina is dedicated to helping abandoned pets find a good home with good people like you. <laughs> I appreciate the assumption. Thanks for participating in the Purina Pets for People program. I guess they must have handed this out when you adopted a dog or something. I'm not exactly sure, because that's what it sounds like. Like as soon as you adopted a dog from a center or something, they would hand you this video along with some food or, or something or nothing. I don't know, maybe just a video. Let's get into it here. Buddy the Wonder Dog video was a little long for my taste. I feel like he really could have uh, brushed it up a bit and he didn't really have to spend as much time on all these sports. That said, it really boils down to a few small tips that he has that make it easy for you to teach your dog. And honestly, I'm gonna let you know that he kind of cheats to teach your dog and to actually end up doing a lot of these tricks with your dog. But one of the things I think I have to mention right up front is he makes it all look very easy. And he's obviously doing this with one of the most uh, well-known and best trained dogs slash dog actors in the business and maybe out there, period. I mean, maybe personally, 
people might have trained their animals to do way more, but you'll never know about it because, I mean, maybe on the internet now, you could find out. People post that stuff to YouTube, Reddit, Twitter, Instagram, you know, all the classics. So I think it might be more obvious now, but definitely in the 90s, like if you were, if you had got this videotape somehow and then were trying to teach your dog, <gasps> somehow I feel like most people couldn't do it and that it was uniquely something that Buddy was capable of in a lot of instances, but I don't know that you could just teach any dog to do a lot of this. You might be able to get some of it done. The other question that I have after watching it is, why would you want to do this with your dog, other than just to have fun? Because Buddy is a dog actor. He gets paid, I mean, his owner gets paid. They get paid to go around and do these things, to make appearances, to be in films. So it makes sense for them to do it, but it doesn't make as much sense for everybody else, really. Because, I mean, other than just some cheap party tricks or just to have fun on your own, I mean, I guess now because of, you know, the culture around, like I said, social media and the internet, it might make more sense to try to do this now because you might get more views or something like that. But there's no real reason other than that that you'd want to try to do any of this. Because obviously, it seems like a lot of... Phil, what are you doing back there, Phil? I told you not to make noise in the back of... I, I told you not to make noises in the back of my videos, Phil. I'm getting a cucumber if you don't mind. Oh my God, Phil, he's going to get cucumbers. I get... get out of here, Phil. What the fuck was I saying? Oh, uh, yeah. There's really no reason you'd you'd want to end up doing this. I don't think um, it doesn't make a hell of a lot of sense other than to, you know, appease current generations. But they really wouldn't have known about that in the '90s. This was to just bring home a VHS, watch it with your family, try to do this stuff with your dog <laughs> for what? To what? To what end? And they call it an uh, instructional exercise video. It's not exercising the person in any real sense because you might do a little bit of throwing or a little bit of shooting a puck, but that's really it. Or maybe a little bit of kicking when you get into the soccer portion. You're not running. You're not really doing much. It's not, I mean, I guess it, anything is exercise if you're not sitting down, but I just don't, I don't see how this could be considered an exercise video because, the, I mean, it's exercise for the dog. If it was uh, a dog instructional exercise video, I mean, Buddy the Wonder Dog's instructional exercise video for dogs, it should say, but because it's not for people, it doesn't teach you to get any exercise. So the basic idea of this video is he goes through sport by sport to tell you exactly what you need to do to train your dog to do this. And the real common threads for, for all of these is to not really use a real version of the ball for training your dog or to even perform these tricks. You don't really want to use a real baseball or softball because they're too uh, hard, dense, and heavy. Uh, they can injure your dog. And then a hockey puck you certainly don't want to use with your dog or any of the roller hockey pucks. All that stuff is way too dangerous for a dog. Uh, it would definitely either break their teeth or hurt their face. You don't want to do any of that. So what he uses is processed tennis balls. Okay, the very first thing we're gonna wanna do is get five tennis balls. If your dog plays fetch, uh, you probably already have a tennis ball for him. Great thing about tennis balls is uh, most households have them lying around. Now what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna pe peel the outer layer of the tennis ball off. He suggests using balls that uh, are old and that they're starting to lose the, uh, the felt on the outside. What we're do is we're gonna wanna pe peel the outer layer of the tennis ball off. As we look here, these older tennis balls uh, have suffered the elements, and you can see they're just about already peeled off. So that you can then take those and scrape them on the concrete. They, they come out like a, like a little black on the inside. You scrape that off. On your hand, they're very easy to sand uh, on some cement surface, cement steps. And then, of course, the final product will be a fully sanded uh, tennis ball. And then they become this, like, brownish color. And that's what you're supposed to use. I mean, it's soft and pliable and something the dog won't get injured by. So it makes a lot of sense. She also says that you could use like a handball or a racquetball if they're soft enough. Just check to make sure that either the racquetball or handball is not brick hard. Never use a hard ball or a softball or even a tennis ball that has skin on it is a lot heavier. That's why I suggest using the core of a tennis ball. And that's very similar in texture and substance to a tennis ball. So I guess that makes a lot of sense. But if not, to actually use tennis balls, but not only do you have to use them without the felt, then you have to sand them. And he suggests doing it on concrete, which is weird. So I guess he just sits in a parking lot somewhere, scraping these on a curb until they're good to go. And he says to use the older ones because it's easier to get the felt off. That's pretty much the common thread for baseball and hockey. Um, and that you use these first by just sitting there and 
uh, for baseball especially because you want to you know crawl, walk, run. You in terms of how you want to handle the process, you start letting your dog go sit in front of you. And first of all, the most important thing is you have to have a dog that obeys commands. If you don't, this is not going to work at all. And I don't know a lot of people whose dogs ever listen to them. Most people don't train their dogs at all or properly. So I don't think that most people would ever be able to get any of this done. Maybe just a couple things here and there. So the first thing, you need to have your dog stay, and then you throw a ball directly at his face from very close, very softly, at your dog's face. So what you'll want to do is, is stand about two feet away from your dog and just very lightly toss it at his snout. And then I guess the whole point of this is reaction. 95% of, do of dogs who like to play fetch can catch a ball in this fashion. So what you want to do is just very lightly stand about two feet away and just toss it towards your dog's snout. Especially if they're paying attention, you have to make sure, first of all, he says too, you have to make sure they're paying attention to you. Let him react to it. Don't throw it fast in the beginning. Always start very light. And as you can see, your dog should right away instantly be able to catch a ball at this distance. And you have to see that like desire in their face. So I just picture a bunch of people out there just like throwing balls at a dog's face uh, who's not even paying attention and just be like, donk. Looks like I'm going to catch a ball. Okay, here we go. Nope. All right. Okay. I didn't catch that one. Uh, maybe I'll catch this one. All right. Let's go. Nope. Definitely didn't catch it. Didn't catch it. But I'm going to catch this one. Yeah. Nope. And, you know, nothing, nothing coming of it. Um, uh, so, and I'm sure there's a lot of stupid people out there that are like, well, I'm not going to get tennis balls, uh, so I'm just going to use a baseball and throwing all sorts of crap at their dogs. Nope. Nope. Didn't catch it. Didn't catch that one either. All right. Well, this one, this one I'm definitely going to catch. Ah. Nope. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to get better at this. I swear. I'm going to get better. I'm going to get better. Let's go. Nope. Nope. I'm not getting better. I'm not getting better. But, but we're going to try it again. Okay. All right. I'm going to get this one. I'm going to get this one. Definitely. Nope. Ah. Well, I'm not doing this. I'm not getting this. I am not getting this. I am not getting this. I'm just... I'm not getting this. What the fuck? Airbud. Why? Why? Why would you have Airbud? Why? Why? I just have to, have to picture that because... Generally, I found people are pretty, pretty, pretty stupid. So I think, um, yeah, I think that hopefully, you know, that didn't happen, but my intuition tells me it did. Anyway, that is the common thread for baseball and hockey. Basically, you cheat by not using either a baseball or a hockey puck. So it's not really those. And then also, he assumes in the hockey portion that you know how to use a hockey stick properly and that you have any level of skill or control over a hockey puck or hockey ball. Now, what's going to make this easiest in the beginning is that you learn how to chip a ball up into the air, almost like if you were golfing, a chip shot. You have to learn how to chip it up because that makes it a lot easier on the dog when you're chipping it up to him like this. To do uh, an upward flick and I don't, or a chip shot, and I don't think anybody, well, I know a lot of people probably have some sort of experience with hockey or at least some people have some sort of experience with hockey but it just seems unlikely so that not only would you have to some people out there would have to learn how to throw a ball properly and some other people would have to learn how to use a hockey stick properly i guess if you have both those bases covered already you're good to go then you just have to have a dog that's compliant and uh has desire to then do any of this so a lot of factors so far this is not exactly he makes it sound like just anybody could do this shit and I don't think that's at all true. Then for soccer and football and basketball, basically, uh, okay, so soccer, you use a partially deflated volleyball that then you, I guess, draw on soccer marks. Even though we're training our dog to do a lot of the sports that we do, some of the equipment I'm sure you've noticed already is not regulation, meaning the baseballs are actually the inside of a tennis ball. The hockey pucks are the same product. You're obviously not going to throw a real baseball at your dog. You're not going to hit a real hockey puck. Now, in soccer, what I've found, um, as far as uh, equipment-wise, the best thing to use is a volleyball. Simply put, a volleyball, which is only pumped up halfway, I would say it has about three or four pounds of pressure, is like a pillow. Because he says using a soccer ball is way too hard. Again, on the dog, it would be too hard for them not only to grab, but also it's, it would hurt them. So definitely don't use an actual soccer ball. Use a deflated partially deflated volleyball that's the softest kind you can find because volleyballs can also get a little bit tough. So really soft volleyball deflated. Then he paints like fake soccer shit on it, I guess with a Sharpie. That's what you do for that. And then you basically, he, he has a lot of dog sitting in front, but he sits in front of a goal quite compliantly. He does not care. 
He'll just sit there and wait a command, which is, I guess, what good dogs do or well-trained dogs do, but most dogs won't. He says, oh, you know what? If he can block uh, a hockey goal, he can block a soccer goal too. So it's the same principle. You just start slowly kicking the ball at the dog from close by and then further away. And you have to make sure you're never kicking it ultimately too hard. Eventually the dog just wants to block it. I don't know. I feel like, again, I feel like this is something Buddy can do, but most dogs don't. And then for football and basketball, basically, I'm not going to lie. It's a 45 minute video. So I started to glaze over in my head a bit watching this dog do shit other people won't do. He also mentions that you don't want to try to score too often on the dog, either in hockey or in soccer, because you want to build his confidence. I don't know that the dog understands the concept. Maybe he does. I know dogs are very intelligent. They could be as intelligent as like three or four year old kids, maybe even older, but I, I don't know that you can teach the dog the concept of goal scoring so that I don't know if it would consider it a defeat if you, if you, how would you sit there and explain that to a dog? It doesn't make a lot of sense. I mean, I get the concept that you want to not um, discourage him and you want to make him build confidence. So you want to make him uh, achieve his goal, which I guess is just to grab the ball. But uh, other than that, like that's a weird point to make, but I guess I get it. There's not really a lot left to say on this video. It's pretty cut and dry. It's too long. And I feel like it's a lot of bullshit because let's be real, uh, maybe one in 10, maybe one in 20 or more dogs would ever be able to do this. Buddy the Wonder Dog, man, he was in Air Bud. Air Bud is gonna shoot some hoop. Shoot some hoop. Air Bud is gonna shoot some hoop. Shoot some hoop. Air Bud is gonna shoot Air Bud, that was cool. Um, but yeah, don't try any of this at home. He tells you to, I'm telling you don't. I'm gonna disclaimer that, don't try the, any of this shit at home. Um, you're gonna hurt your dog. <laughs> if you wanna stick to doing stupid internet challenges uh, and, and maybe harming yourself, um, I won't advocate that either, but I'd advocate that before doing anything like this with your dog. Um, so yeah, don't be stupid. And the next video I watched uh, was this Purina promotional training video, which quite honestly serves its purpose pretty well. It gives out good advice. It's a, uh, a promo tool. They are our special friends, a constant in a changing world. Loyal companions, loving friends. Scientists have discovered that our pets not only help make us happier, they may also help make us healthier. First and foremost, the very first thing that happens in it is you get a number of 90s Purina commercials. These puppies may grow to become champions, but bloodline alone isn't enough. To reach their full potential, they'll need the balance of essential nutrients they get in Puppy Chow brand from Purina, which may be just the thing to bring up the potential in puppies like Dweezil or Filbert. And I remembered them. I remembered some of them at least, uh, or at least I remembered the series. Uh, I think I remembered one even specifically, but um, it's just a couple Purina commercials uh, for dog chow and puppy chow and, you know, whatever, people chow. And then later you get uh, a very nice lady teaching you how to train your dog. Hi, I'm Char Bibia. My friends and I are at the Purina Pet Care Center, the world's largest single facility devoted exclusively to dog and cat nutrition studies and care. Fletcher, sit. Good boy. No one knows pets like Purina, and no one works harder to help them live longer, healthier lives. Concise, short, clear, to the point. It's funny that somebody like Purina can do that. I think, cynically speaking, that that's because they had a budget and a time frame to stick to, so they weren't going to deviate too much from that. And they said, you know what? We need a 25 minute video. Uh, make sure you cut it in, no more, no less. We're only paying this much, get it done. So they did a good job. You're probably not gonna ever find this. It might even be somewhere on YouTube. So take a look if you wanna watch a 90s dog training video. Not much else to say about it, to be honest. So thanks for watching Video Hell Show. Obviously this was a short one this week. Hopefully next week I'll come back with something a little crazy. This wasn't too wild, but uh, yeah, I, I had a good enough time. 
I have some real fun things coming up. I'm going to try to do uh, an exercise video. Uh, I think there's a lot of action movies on my list that I have to do. I just went to the dollar store the other day and I found a lot of good gems. So, uh, yeah, we're going to keep on cranking them out for you out there. Have a very nice spring uh, or whatever the rest there is in March. I'll probably be back soon, but, you know, I do this all myself, so it takes uh, a lot of effort on my part to uh, set it up, shoot it, watch the videos, and then edit everything. Labor of love, so I don't mind. Uh, if you haven't done so yet, uh, like and subscribe, and I will see you guys uh, again soon. Have a good one. Well, I'm not doing this. I'm not getting this. I am not getting this. I am not getting this. I'm just, I'm not getting this.